Adam Noam from TastePC.TV and today I'm going to take you a look at the Corsair Gaming K70 RGB mechanical keyboard, which is a fully mechanical keyboard that uses German engineered Cherry MX switches and has RGB backlighting. Now, as this keyboard is part of the new Corsair Gaming division, it does have a different logo to the standard or kind of main one. Um, and I personally, honestly, actually really like it. I think that it either looks like two blades crossing with like fancy handles, which I imagine is probably the point to go with the whole kind of pirate theme. Or it kind of looks like a heart with dragony wings, which is probably also kind of the point to go with the whole kind of I heart Corsair Gaming slogan that you can get on you know, some of Corsair's t-shirts. But uh, while I really like it, there was a lot of people who really hated it. So for that reason, of course, they're uh, you know, also selling a Vengeance version of the RGB K70, which comes with Cherry MX Red switches, whereas the Corsair Gaming version comes with either Cherry MX Red, Blue or Brown switches. So therefore, I asked for the version with Cherry MX Brown switches, that's my favourite Cherry MX switch colour, and therefore got any colour other than brown. Um, so I'm going to be looking at the version with Cherry MX Red switches. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I've already done a review of the Vengeance K70, K95 and K65, and in which the K70 got my sweet award, because it is a really great mechanical keyboard and I do really like it, so and I'll, I'll kind of link that video somewhere. Um, but therefore, I'm, in this video, I'm not really going to look around the keyboard, but instead I'm just going to focus on, you know, lighting options and the Corsair Utility Engine. And I should actually say that when this keyboard first came, because I've had it for quite a while now, and since then the lighting's kind of worn off on me, but when I first got it, I was just mesmerised by the lighting. Like, I spent two days with my face, like, this far away from the keyboard, just making different lighting effects, making different profiles, and just playing with it. I was like a cat at later quest. It was insane. It was... It was so much fun to play with. I essentially just, like, bought a light show that just happened to come with a free mechanical keyboard. Um... But yeah, so, um, so before we actually get started, I'll just quickly kind of talk you through some of the features, I suppose. Um, so yeah, as well as Cherry MX switches, it also has Cherry stabilizers and laser engraved ABS keycaps. Um, it's got 104 key rollover, it's got 100% anti-ghosting technology, it's got a 32-bit processor, inbuilt memory, and obviously a powerful lighting controller. Um, we've also got a bar switch at the top which controls the hauling rate, we've got a reset hub, we've got this really sexy like black braided USB cable which has got two USB connectors at the end. We no longer have the USB port though that we had with the orig uh, original <laughs> Vengeance K70. Um, but yeah, so here we've got some dedicated media keys and as I said in kind of my review of the Vengeance K70, I really love the scroll wheel, like, I really love that. However, the media keys that are on the kind of indented bit if that's the right word to use um i really wish they were actual you know cherry max switches rather than buttons because with this key all with this keyboard all of the switches or keys i should say are fully remappable so i really have loved to just had them kind of macroed up because i hardly ever use you know media keys on keyboards and then therefore i could have bought some nice custom keycaps and had the symbols on them kind of you know reflect what what i'd got it to do rather than always looking like media keys um which is probably a point in terms of kind of the profile of the keycaps on this keyboard or switches I should say um the bottom row does use a non-standard spacing so if you did want to buy like a full keycap set for this keyboard you might have a trouble finding one where kind of the bottom row fits which is a shame because I reckon it would look really nice with like some transparent keycaps but the WASD you could still switch out if you wanted to which would be cool but that's another point with the Vengeance K70 you did get this really sexy like um set of fps keycaps which i really liked but i heard that some people have problems with their longevity so i don't know if that's why they don't come with them i'm not really sure but yeah so um that's another thing other this is something that people always bring up when i look at keyboards basically because i live in england i get kind of the english keyboard layout which has the short left shift key and like a two tier enter whereas um, if you live, for example, in America and you bought this keyboard, you get it with the American region layout, so the long left shift key and like the single row enter. So, you know, don't worry, if you buy this keyboard, it will come with the correct region layout for where you live. Um, but yeah, so we've got this black anodized brushed aluminium frame which curves over this kind of plastic base, which does give the keyboard some pretty sturdy build quality. Um, I think that might be it. So, yeah, let's take a closer look at the RGB Chromex Red Switches. So here we can see the RGB Cherry MX switch, which is quite a bit different to the standard LED Cherry MX switches, where they, we've no longer got like an LED diode mounted in the top of the switch, but instead the LEDs are PCB mounted. And then so that the light can still get through, we've got a small lens in the switch and also the switch's casing is transparent. 
Um, but having the ADs mounted in the PCB instead should reduce the build-up of static electricity from the keyboard being used, which can cause the LEDs to fail. So not only are they more reliable, but I think they're just as bright. So I have now attached the wrist rest, which I forgot to mention earlier. I've plugged in the keyboard and updated the firmware. And I'll start by going through the lighting options, and then after that I'll go through the rest of the Corsair Utility Engine and cover things like the macros. But with the lighting options, this is how the keyboard comes by default, with all of the keys having this solid red background colour, but then also the WSD keys and arrow keys also having an active foreground lighting effect, which in this case is supposed to pulsate white, as the name suggests, and as you can see it is sorry, pulsating to white, and then back to red, just not massively smoothly um but this is how you know the lighting works with this keyboard you can have like a background um kind of solid lighting and then you can also have active foreground lighting which can play either automatically or in reaction to using the keyboard so starting by just covering the background lighting because you don't actually have to have you know the foreground lighting if you don't want to you could go very subtle with the lighting with this keyboard you could have it just be all one colour or just have the WSD keys lit up or you know have a very simple pattern. So what you do to change the background colour is you select the keys you want either by highlighting them or by just you know selecting keys like this and holding control to select more and then you can add them to a group if you want so that you can um so it's easy to change them again in the future and then you just choose the colour you want and it's that simple. Um, or if you wanted to, you could also change them outside of a group by just highlighting them and then choosing the colour. But the problem with doing it that way is if you, the keys that are kind of there, so say the arrow keys, if you then add them to a group and you choose, for example, red, because it's now blue and red, it will show purple. So that's just something to bear in mind that it will show you kind of a mix of the two colours you chose. So, you know, unless that's the look you're going for, what you want to do beforehand is make sure to remember to clear the keys and now it's displaying red like it's supposed to. But for the background colours, you've got these 16 different colours to choose from, black, um, just kind of being the LEDs off. But if you want to choose more colours than that, what you can do, if I just um, go back to having all the keys lit up, and I'll just get rid of these groups here, is you can right click on one of these and then, you know, choose any colour that you want. Or you could even pick, um, you know, a colour off your screen. But I have noticed with this, the second that you go off, it kind of stops telling you what colour you're choosing and only chooses you like the first colour that it sees when you first come off the edges. But yeah, so you can choose all these different colours and the point is is that it's supposed, you're supposed to have like 16.8 million colours to choose from but what I have noticed is that it does have an issue doing certain shades for example this one right here looks very purple to me on screen if I click it these keys will look purple to me here if I then preview it while the box is purple I would say it's probably a darker purple than the keys, but from what I can see looking at the keyboard, I don't know what the camera's picking up, but in real life the keyboard looks very blue. Like maybe with a slight hint of purple, but overall, you know, just a very blue colour. Whereas on screen to me it definitely looks purple, but you know, I don't have I'm not currently using like a pro art colour calibrated monitor, so it could always be lying to me, but I also notice it with this colour here. Like to me on screen this looks kind of kind of like an orangey yellow um, you know in here and then if I right click it I would say it looks very kind of like a mustard yellow and from what I can see looking at the keyboard it is orange like it looks kind of like burnt carrot I would say if I was going to try and describe it I would imagine it'd be more the shade you expect to get if you'd chosen kind of a colour like this but that being said there are some shades I feel like it does perfectly like this pink here I feel like it does that perfectly um so yeah so that's kind of it with the background lighting now, when it comes to foreground lighting, you can either create your own or you can import ones that people have made. So at the moment, I've just got the Pulsate one or that comes with it defaultly. Um, but if you do import ones that people have made, like if you import the actual profiles, then you'll get all of the random little lighting effects that they've made, um, kind of when they exported it. So I'm gonna st I'm gonna start by making a new one, and you can either go here and then click new to get to the foreground lighting editor, and then to add it what you can do is you've got a list here you click on the group and then you can drag it to the group and then you know that's now um got that but 
or if what you can do is you can choose the group you want and then right click and click assign new lighting to get to the same place. So then here you've got the option of either choosing a solid, a gradient, a ripple or a wave effect and I'm going to start with solid um, just to kind of show you around them. So what you can do is you can right click click add to add like essentially just you know like a block of light. So at the moment because this duration is for 10 seconds and each of these is essentially you know therefore a second long it will show it, the, the LEDs will turn white for five seconds and then they'll turn off for five seconds before returning back to pink as they are now. So if I just add another one um, and I make um, let's say let's make this one red and then this one blue and then we'll shorten it because 10 seconds is very long to I don't know so say so four seconds and then each of them will play for two seconds each and at the moment I've got it so that it will react when I press but you have to name them so, so solid um, and here you go so if I now press the key it will turn red for two seconds then blue for two seconds and it will go back but one thing that I've noticed with this is that if you kind of keep pressing the keys it will keep kind of reactivating it so if you I was to just continually type it would stay red forever pretty much and then only if I stopped would it turn to blue and then back to pink um but what you can do instead if you prefer is you can change it so that it will do automatically with mode and then if I also just click this to flip them um and then it will automatically go from blue to red back to blue you know and it will do it kind of um on a loop so you could do that for example or if say we want to do a gradient instead now this is kind of similar but rather than it um you know it being you kind of changing the color of the block you change the color of these kind of points and then you can have it um switch you know it will slowly go as you can see it will kind of fade between so um like this and then if we have that shorter again and we can oh we gotta call it something uh and now there you go so it will slowly fade through to blue um, but just like before, I could keep it, you know, right forever um, before I let it fade. But um, if we kind of play with that again, just... And the great thing with gradients is that... Uh, yeah, the great thing with gradients and the solid colours is that if you kind of have it to just play automatically, the second it finishes playing the last colour of kind of the first run through, it will immediately start playing the first colour of the second run through, which is great because... Um, one thing that you'll notice, for example, with the ripple, if I show you that now, and the same thing with the wave, is that if I if I talk you for it first, and then I'll kind of remember to mention it again, is um, okay. So, so let's go for because it's ripple. Let's go for kind of a watery color. So let's go for blues. Um, it's kind of the same color there, isn't it? Um, hmm. it's a bit lighter. I don't know if that was too light now. Oh well. Oh. Who knows? <laughs> uh, that's, that's okay. Okay, that's fine. So here we've got you know we can choose pointers the same way we can with gradient. We've got a tail, and basically this is like how many keys it takes up. We've got a velocity, which is how fast it moves across the keyboard, and we've got duration, which was the same before. You know how long does it take? So yeah, the thing that you'll notice with this is unlike with solid colors and the gradients, is that when the sorry that's really pretty see when it ends it will take a while for it to start playing again so there's things we can do to make it more accurate so if we may make the um the philosophy and duration same time and maybe make the tail 15 instead i don't know if that will do it um so it it cut out so that's it needs to move a bit faster should we say Yeah, so maybe maybe in between the two. But just make that six. So now when this one ends, the next one should begin. Yeah, but did you see it had to kind of end completely before the next one beginning, rather than being kind of a continuous wave, it had to end and then it would begin. And that's the same thing with the wave. Um which if I do kind of Hmm, let's make this one, she makes this one fiery, I suppose. Okay, let's do that. Uh, 
Sure, why not? Wave. Oh, God. Sorry, I'm trying to like, type through the tripod legs. So I've got one leg around, one arm around the tripod, and one arm through the tripod. It's making it very difficult to see what I'm doing. So, yeah, so here we've got Wave, as you can see. Uh -huh. Oh, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Um, what am I doing? Uh, okay, so let's do the same thing that I did before. So, 15, what was it, 6 and 5. And that might make it. I don't know if this will be the same time as the ripples. So yeah, so that cut out early, so let's make it move a bit faster. So yeah, it has to get to the end and then finish before it starts playing again. So for all that time, the keys are permanently pink. I know that the, you know, so. Um, there's that. So what something that you can do instead if you use gradients, and this is what a lot of people have been doing when they've been making like waving rainbows and stuff, is that they've been making gradients but then like having the keys here play from, you know, like red all the way through the rainbow back to red again and then here like pink all the way through the rainbow back to pink and then down here it's like blue all the way and then it, because they're, you know, because they're all changing through the same colours but one after the other it make it gives the appearance of it waving so I'm actually going to show you some examples um that people have made that I like so let's do that now um okay so let's start with um okay spiral rainbow to begin with so yeah so as you can see we currently have a spiral rainbow which is very pretty, and oh, I should say circling, I suppose. And this kept me entertained for hours when I first downloaded it. But what they've done here is they've kind of split it into sections, but this time rather than moving along, they've done it kind of in circles, um, like this, as you can see. And then each of these individual ones are gradients going through, you know, a rainbow like this, which is just insane. But we've got red to red, and then like down here we'll have like green to green so it gives it the impression of it kind of waving but if you were going to look at those separately um so yeah so you let know we've now got a long list of ones from the person who's made it uh fast rain okay shall we i think i imagine it'd be called um let's make it play automatically yeah so it's now pulsating although it's scary speeds <laughs> So let's make it go a bit slower. And there you go. So that's, you know, that's the rainbow gradient just on its own across the whole keyboard. But by kind of using zones um, and groups to your advantage, you can make cool lighting effects, which is another thing that obviously you can use. You can have multiple lighting effects going on at the same time, which is really cool. So there's this example, but there's also um, another one. And I'll, I will link all of these in the description below. Um, of the ones who made them and you know so you can go pick them up but there's another one so for example mega rainbow here well it's the same thing but it but obviously they've done it in kind of straight sections so that it waves across which is cool um and then again if i go over to test we can see uh that um i think it's yep okay i think it's that one it, it pulsates the same as before because it's just on a gradient but something that you could do for example rainbow wave is this was this is an example of um it actually rainbowing um as part of a wave rather than a gradient and you can see there that it goes well but then when it ends there's always there's always a gap of pink so if i make it easier by making that black so you can see you can see that it always has to end before it can start again, which kind of sucks, but yeah. So one thing that I did forget to mention is that the great thing about waves is that you can actually change the direction of them. So at the moment it's going left to right, but I can make it go, um, I could make it like play in that direction or um, kind of have it coming from that way. So yeah, you can go crazy with it. Another thing is that you can split it into two sides and have it coming out from two sides which is pretty cool as you can see so this is kind of yeah <laughs> okay so let's have a look at another one shall we um 
Okay, let's have a look at the Thunderstorm one because I really like this one. And this one uses quite a few different ones. So firstly, the background is a wave. Uh, so rather than using like a just a solid background color of like blue or purple, that that's waving, which is pretty cool. Then we've got the rain, which is once again waving down. So that it's creating like a rain effect. And then finally, we've got the thunder, which is actually like a gradient and together i think it looks really cool but if you kind of look at all the parts separately if i can remember what they were all called um so yeah we've got the rain one here and this is what the rain looks like like by itself the rain effects that you saw which is cool then the background i think it was called storm um okay here we go and then that's what that one looks like and then the thunder i think the thunder looks really cool by itself if i find that um well, there's a lot more now floating around uh, i should just search but i'm so far away from making fun it's very hard to reach it you see hmm. i think it was this, this one or this one maybe it was this one yeah see it looks like thunder so i really love that it's really cool um so it's just some examples of what you can do. But another thing with the Thunderstorm one that I haven't talked about yet is that it has reactive lighting. So if I like hit it, you can see it doing it. Which is just really cool. And I will talk more about the reactive lighting. Um, oh God, I've been typing. <laughs> I will talk more about the um, reactive lighting in a minute once I've gone through the rest of these. But yeah, so. So have a look for some more. So, um, okay, electric charge, because it's kind of similar to Thunderstorm, where, uh, okay, uh, I don't know. Uh, so I, I've just got, um, I'm opening one by my, made by someone I opened before, so it's asking me if I want to replace the random mass of lighting <laughs> effects that I now have. But yeah, so. Um, okay, so with this, we've got, a black, uh, like a background colour of red and then we've got, oh no, that's not got anything. Have you got anything? Yes. So here we've got little ripples which are making these little kind of sparks which do things are really cool and a really cool effect. And what are these called? Sorry. Uh, diamond. Okay, so that's cool. So if we go back and look at that by its own again because I, I don't know if I find it quite interesting seeing them by themselves for some reason. I don't know if you do at all. <laughs> You'd be like, get on with it, woman. But yes, okay. Um, let's have a look, shall we? And then play that. See, I just think that looks really cool. Really, really cool. Should we have a look at some more? Yeah, we should. We definitely. <laughs> it's, so, it's so much fun. I, I said it's worn off, I mean, it has worn off on me massively. I'm no longer like, ooh, ah. Oh. But it's still, I can still play with it for hours. Um, what should we look at now? Uh, let's import another one. Um, okay. So this time we'll go for Firestorm, I think, which is another cool one that I really like the look of. And with this one, um, oh no, they haven't got anything for that. <laughs> um, so fire one. So here we've got different waves creating the kind of fire that rises up, which is a really cool one. I think works really well and then the actual base itself so the bit that kind of smoulders rather than this being a wave it's a gradient so once again i think that's really cool and i sure is <laughs> stop like picking them apart but yes so uh what was it called again fur base i think um let's go have a look hmm. was it this maybe i don't know Oh, no, it definitely wasn't rain. Haha, uh -huh, I found you. You thought you could run, but you are wrong. Um, okay, so yeah, there we go. We can see it. <laughs> okay, um, okay, so these ones, I the Night Rider ones, I included because I thought they were quite interesting because they're both attempts at kind of the same thing but done in different ways. So if we start with this one here, uh, go for it. Um, okay, so we can see that we've got like a background color, which is just kind of waves of red. And then it's these ones, I believe. Yeah, so then here we've got the actual kind of 
bit that's coming across, which reminds me of a sign on. I don't like to wear actually. And these are made of solid, um, you know, solid effects. So, as you can see there. But the same effect has been done, but rather than using like, solid effects, okay. <laughs> It uses, it, they've set it up like this, and it uses weights instead. So I just thought that was kind of interesting that, like, for example, you can create the same look but using different techniques to do so. Um, and then I think there was one more that I wanted to show. Yeah, cybernetic. So this one, I'm not very keen on the colour scheme. So f from that angle, it's not like one of my favourites, but I, I think it's quite cool what they've done still. So they've got a background colour which is waving. Um, different colours of green and then rather than having kind of reactive lighting because with reactive lighting it kind of ripples out um so with this instead we've got these different sections and then they've kind of they've still made them ripples but this way where wherever you press it kind of lights up the kind of immediate area instead which i just think is kind of you know like really cool but yeah so um yeah so with in terms of reactive lighting now this is set up when you choose a profile so here it's called type lighting type lighting as well and then you've got the choice of it of choosing either single keys or multiple keys so firstly if we go single key then well, if you go single you've only got the option of making a gradient so let's go for kind of like a fire one again i think we should do I should say that when you take these to the top, it increases the intensity. So I suppose it's kind of essentially the same as playing around with the brightness. And I should probably mention the keyboard does have a brightness. Um, oh god, one, two, three, four, five. So yeah, um, it does have a brightness button. So yeah, so let's um, make it red again, shall we? Um, mm -hmm. Hmm, uh, I can't find orange. Oh, there it is. Never mind. <laughs> and yellow. Okay, yep, yep. 10 seconds is a bit long for reactive lighting. Should we make it like 2 seconds? And now, I should probably stop the active effect. Screw it. Let's delete it. So there's no active effect now. So now you can see that. Now it's really clear. So if I don't just type. And I try and reach. Oh, I can't do it with that hand. Ta da! <laughs> As the reactive lighting still fascinates me despite how long it's been out for. So, and then with multiple keys instead, you've got ripples. So, if we if we go for the whole kind of blue theme again with the ripples, um, and then I know. So, uh, let's make that, see once again, it's, I think it's far too long for it to lighting, so let's make it like 4 seconds. And now, it'll ripple out from any key that I press, which I think was once again really cool. But, like before, if I was just to like spam a key, it would like, it wouldn't like just continuously start rippling and then stop rippling, it would just kind of continue. Um, but the problem is, is that if you, when you want to do this, you can't upload or kind of as far as I can tell you can't use the lighting effect you already created like you've got to use it then and there so if we just kind of have another play with it again I suppose um but yeah so uh let's kind of make it fire shall we but yeah so so yeah, those are pretty much the lighting effects. What I would probably do myself if I was going to be using it is I definitely have reactive lighting because there's just a given. And I probably just have it single rather than kind of rippling out. And I probably make it um, probably kind of fire themed. So so it was like f fires coming out of your fingertips when you type. And that's kind of cool. Um, hmm. And then we just decrease the duration. So that now does that when you type, which I think is really cool. And then what I probably do in terms of the actual lighting is I probably try and make it kind of smoky. So I don't know how I'm going to do that given the black, you know, turns off 
the LEDs. Oh, I forgot what I was doing. So, uh, what's the lightest we can go with the LEDs before they turn on? I don't know if it's just because I'm sat under studio lights, but I can't see them on at all. Oh, now I can see it. Um, okay, so that's like white at this point. It's not very smoky. It's just kind of copied that so we know it's as dark as we can go. I, it, it might have come on already, but from where I'm sat, it's because of how bright the studio lights are, I can't really see much um, if they are on dimly. But yes, okay, so let's, um, a sign of that, we'll have a, we can have a wave that comes across, and let's just, should we do three? Okay, why not? Um, see, so, uh, let's, let's put in that colour, and then uh, go a bit lighter of it. This is ridiculously light at this point, <laughs> that's like white. Might as well just leave the middle one white at this point. Uh, to about here. And then, what should we do? Should we do 15? I can't remember what settings I had before that kind of worked. I think it was like 10 and 5, wasn't it? I don't know. I can't remember. Um, God. Should we call it smear or not? So, it would kind of... This is probably how I'd have it. I'd probably... I'd play with it more, obviously, to make it look better because smoke isn't white. <laughs> but yeah, so I'd kind of attempt to have smoke kind of drifting across. And then when I typed, it would be like all fiery, or the yellow is very green from where I'm sat. So I would, I would obviously play with it a lot longer than this, but that's just kind of the sort of thing that I would make. Um, but yeah. Next up, we've got the profiles, and as you already know, we can create new ones and import or export ones. Um, and if you do create a new one, then you've got the option to do things like link it to a program. Um, and change the on-screen display settings and then also as you know to control reactive typing um, and then inside that profile you can have different modes making the profile perfect for things like games so for example um, an MMO you could make a profile for that and then you could have a different mode for each of like your characters so you could have like a cleric one let's make that kind of I don't know, blue um, and then that would, you know, and then you could have the macros that you wanted that were relevant. And then let's have this one for, um, I don't know, let's do like a mage or something to make it purple. But yeah, so I, I think that in that way, it's really great from kind of a game point of view. Because, you know, you start a new game, the, it will just open, you know, depending on the application, you'll, it will change the profile you want. And then you can just easily switch between the modes and it will be fine. But I also think it'd be great from kind of a productivity point of view because say like you were, I don't know, you, you're working and like the application that you use mostly when you're at work, you could have that so obviously when that starts it switches to like a work profile and rather than having like rainbows or whatever, your keyboard could go to maybe kind of more professional lighting or just, you know, something easy to see and then you could have all the macros that you would, uh, you know, kind of shortcuts to all the things that you, you usually do. So I think it'd be great from a production point of view but also you know, for like gaming and stuff. But with the profiles, you change them either by, you know, changing them here, and you can also change them on this little thing down here. Um, but with modes, you can only change them in the Corsair Utility Engine. Well, I suppose you can only change it all in the Corsair Utility Engine. So if you actually want to change it outside of it, you need to macro buttons so that they, you know, will change between the modes and the profiles. So if we then go over to macros, and obviously you can see I've got all the ones here from that people have been making, but you can create a new macro here if you like, and then you come to the actions editor. Well, you do have very different options, so like you've got some for your mouse, but for example, you could just make a standard macro, so you know, record it, stop, you've got some different options to play with, and you can have it so that like lighting starts, for example, when it starts. Um, you can have like a text macro, you can have a keystroke, you could make it a shortcut, you can make it be a timer, which is pretty cool. Um, and you could have that like, lighting play when it ends, or you could have a macro play when it ends. And then you've also got the media control. So you can create macros here, and then the same with kind of the lighting, you can come here and then choose a macro, choose a um, thing, like, you know, sit it on it like that, and then that's that simple. If I press seven on the num log, it will now do whatever that macro was, I have no idea what it does, but yeah, so, um, if, but you can also make it by, you know, clicking here, and then you can assign new action and get to the actions editor this way, but this is also where you go to make, um, a macro to switch between the modes and make a macro switch between the profiles, which is cool. 
But yeah, so that's kind of it for the macros. And there are some other things you can do to court AD um, engine. Like, for example, you can choose what the Windows lock um, function does. So we've got it up here. Um, you've got kind of the settings tab where you've got some different options here and it will let you change, you know, like some of the settings for um, the on-screen display. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the Corsair Utility Engine. I could have obviously have gone through everything in kind of a lot more detail, but then that would have made it kind of more of a guide if I, you know, gone through everything and explained what everything did. So yeah, um, while the software is not perfect, I, you know, Corsair are kind of saying that they're actively kind of working on it and they want to continue to kind of improve it and stuff. So I think it'd be interesting to see how it ends up turning out, but yeah. So moving on to the conclusion, as I said before, the Vengeance K70 got my sweet award, which is kind of my version of recommended. Because, um, you know, I really loved its functionality, its mechanical keyboard, I really loved how it looked, I just really liked the keyboard. The only thing that stopped it from getting the Tasty Award, which is my highest award, is that it was limited when it came to lighting options compared to the other keyboards that were out at the time. Um, and obviously this keyboard ticks that box. So the question is, is does it deserve to get the Tasty Award now, given that it is currently about £50 more expensive than the non gbk 70 And I think the answer to that is very subjective. I think that if you're one of those people who's just perfectly happy not like to not have LED backlighting, then this is not the keyboard you're looking for. Um, I mean, it does have pretty decent macro functionality, you know, being able to remap all of the keys, but there are keyboards with similar functionality at lower prices. If you're kind of in the category of people who you like having AD backlighting, but you don't really see the point in having kind of, you know, rainbows going across your screen or, uh, you, you know, all that sort of stuff, it's, it might be for you, it might not be for you. I think you have to take into consideration things like is the colour of backlighting you want easily available? So for example if you happen to have a certain P2 edition yellow 380T and you wanted your keyboard's backlighting to be yellow to match would you be able to easily pick up a keyboard with yellow backlighting and for example Cherry Mix Brown switches? Um, so you've got to take things like that into consideration and also you know, it's not unheard of to have a mechanical keyboard for like five to ten years, given that the switches are meant to last, you know, forever. So, um, would you want to be? Would you want to have the freedom to be able to change the that color, you know, to match your build as you changed it, or you know, things like that? Because it would really suck for me if every time I built a new rig, I would have to, you know, buy a new keyboard to, to get the LED lighting to match because I like them to match. Um, some people would be happy, you know, just having the same color going you know all the way along or the the time they have the keyboard but others won't so i think in, if you're in that category things like you know is the color available is the color you want you know uncommon do you want the freedom to be able to change the color things like that and also can you afford the additional 50 pound price tag or lastly you could be in the same category i am where you enjoy playing with the lighting as much as you do using the keyboard you love being able to have it red one day blue the next the next day have it like spiraling rainbows the next day have it like rippling different shades of red so it looks like there's like fire coming out of your fingertips when you type um you know you you want you love being able to change it just because or to match your build or to match what you're wearing or and you, you like having a different lighting profile for every single game you play then this is definitely the keyboard for you and i really love this keyboard so it's getting my tasty board it definitely deserves it and i have to say the k65 because i prefer short keyboards with Cherry Max brown switches the rgb version is my green keyboard and if i was going to be buying a keyboard for myself that would be the one i'd buy so yeah, if you like the video, hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see more of my videos. And thanks for watching.